Welcome back to part two of the TT podcast with our guest, John Holden. And um, John, we've just been uh, chatting just before the start of part two. Let's get straight into 2023. We'll talk about 2022 and, and yeah, yeah. probably throughout this, but heading into 2023 TT, you're, you've just asked Steve if he'll be a passenger. You're, uh, he hasn't you're answered me yet. He hasn't. He hasn't. Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm I can very, see it looking in his eyes. <laughs> I'm very expensive. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but as it stands right now, no passenger for, 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 for TT 2023. Yeah, no. And the situation we're in, um, it's very difficult to get to get a passenger to do the speeds that need to do to to get on that podium. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I first started, I, like I said, I were fourth at, at 97 mile an hour. If you did... Uh, 117, you wouldn't be fourth mm -hmm. now. Do you, know yeah. what I mean? you need to be knocking on the door 19s or whatever to to even get anywhere near. So the situation is that all the 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 guys that can go them speeds are, are taken, and that's no disrespect to anybody else because it's, it's tough whatever you do. Mm -hmm. And I think with COVID taking two years away and then and then last year, I just don't think there's been enough people entering into the the sidecar sport mm -hmm. to do them speeds you know what i mean so explain to especially to me i thought the speed would come solely from the 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 driver and the passenger would just hang adapt on. yeah not not necessarily <laughs> hang on but yeah so what is it that makes a passenger able to go like you said like you've said 110 mile an hour lap with all due respect mm. isn't as difficult but when you get beyond 110, what is it you need in a passenger to to go up to those speeds? They, they just need to do more work, right? And keep out of the wind and hide and just. They, if you watch, if you watch Tom Birchall, how he any onboard footage of Tom is is amazing. Just mm. how how much effort he puts in. But there's a lot of corners they need to work and be quick and. But it's it's tough. I I, I won't go shop on one. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that for a gold clock. Yeah. But some guys do, and and some guys, you know, love it. But but just to just to uh, set off knowing that you're going to do them speeds. No, it's it's tough. But I don't feel I'm pushing the envelope. I don't feel like I'm going. I'm going too fast. It's just. Do you know what I mean? And Where does that saying come from for a gold clock? That's a proper northern. You've been watching too much bullseye or something like that. No, that's what, isn't that what you get when you retire? When you've I didn't get one. No? And I'm retired. <laughs> no, retired. Yeah, so, yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, it's real tough and there's not many can do it. There's a handful of, uh, and they're all taken. So I've approached a few people and for various reasons they're not able to or... Or can't uh, jump on with me, so. But I don't think I'm on my own. I think um, Tim Rees might be struggling as well to to find the right person to to do it. So here's a question: when when you're going out for a for a, a lap, always the idea is to go as fast as possible. But are you telling the passenger right? We're going to push, and I want to try and see if we can get to 112. Or do you ride the bike a little bit harder, a little bit harder, and then they you hope that they speed up to to where you're at? How does it work? Yeah. Yeah, I, it's weird. I, I, I don't. I go out and ride the bike, but I don't feel like I'm pushing. Yeah, and I don't. I don't think I could say right today. We're gonna go and do 120 mile an hour, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna break later. I'm gonna do this. It just sort of a natural. It just happens. So for a passenger to understand that, as long as it's smooth and and I'm not rubbing them against bankings and yeah. and. And chucking them about and breaking hard and you know what I mean. Doing, I think it's f easier. I think I think to, somebody to jump on with myself who's been around there that many times. It's not scrappy, you know. Yeah. What I mean? So, um, how 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 fast do you think you're capable of going? Because you know, with all due respect, at sixty years old, yeah, you should be putting should your feet be. up, reading your newspaper, having a nice walk to shops. Why? Well, I, I mean, that's just, that, I, I, I think it's right. amazing. I think it's blooming brilliant you're that you're still right. doing it. Yeah, you're, you're dead right. I think if, if Tom Birch were on with me, I could go as fast as Ben does. I'm, I'm conv convinced. It's, it's not, <laughs> because it's not, 
I, I don't feel like I'm pushing. Yeah. And 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 thanks to my sponsor Ian Barnes, and also this year we've got Carl Cox on board with us mm -hmm. as well. I have a fantastic bike, and I I know where I'm going. I know how to prep it. I know what I'm I know what I'm doing. It's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. You obviously know how you're prepping with as many podiums on the bounce as you've got. It's not. So what? You know. To learn it. To learn. Mm. Uh, no, the answer is no. Go on. <laughs> So how long does it take for a passenger? Obviously, I'm fully aware on the solo side, but how long does it take for a passenger really to learn the craft of the TT course? You need to know where you're going. That's that's the main thing. You can ride a, if, if to go there. You can ride a sidecar. You understand what what you're doing on a sidecar. This is from my perspective as a driver. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, they might I might get a load of emails saying what you're talking about. But if they know where they're going and 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 they know where they need to work, then. Yeah, I think it's okay for them. But so, that's me saying that. Steve, I know you've got a lot of TV. You know your way around there, don't you? I know my way around. You need I'm to just, lose no, a few I'm pounds, just, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking, do you know who I'm thinking you should ask? He probably might listen. He might be listening. I don't ever listen to him or not. Lee Johnston. Ooh, yeah. He always said he wanted to, didn't no, he? No, he's passengered uh, uh, Dean Harrison. There we go. He'd be wanting to get all at bars, though, wouldn't he? He'd be wanting to drive. Yeah. I don't know. He, he was keen. Well, I think Dean spat him out of the back, but... Yeah, he'd be... He may not ask. Does he He's weigh enough, though? Does... He'd be perfect. Would he? Yeah. He could stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Come on, Lee. <laughs> Just surf it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to make it sound too simple for the passenger. You know, yeah, like yeah. It. They just got to know where they're going and, mm -hmm. and be a good passenger, and then it'll come. I, th I don't, you know what I mean? And yeah. Last year I went uh, with Jason Pitt, brilliant passenger, but I think he was he was holding on to too much. He could do the speeds, and he said the corners and that wasn't a problem, but he was he was hanging on. You know what I mean? Was and, that Jason's first time at the TT? Yes. Right. And was that making him tired? That was making him tired, yeah. yeah. He just, uh, the reason why I say that is because obviously... Pump and everything. You know, I did a lap with uh, Ben. Yeah. And it wasn't a slow lap. Um, luckily, he had a bit of a misfire, to be honest. It had been a lot flipping faster. But um, I was knackered after a lap. And obviously, you yeah. boys do three laps on the bounce. That's obviously because I'm hanging on... Not, yeah, for, think, dear, not for dear life, but because it's unnatural for me to be in that position, you know. A lot of them lads get arm pumped. They're, they're, they're really old on too, too yeah. tight. Yeah. Um, my wife Fiona, she she passengered for her dad for quite a few years until she stopped. She was the fastest lady, hundred and ten mile an hour. But she used to uh, hold him one hand and and be you know moving loosening her other hand up because she she knows that you get arm pump. You can't you, your arm just goes numb. You yeah. can't you can't mm. do anything. Can't you? hang on. No, yeah. you can't hang on, and then you get scared with it. And it's, yeah, that's so, the biggest thing. So was that. Jason's main reason for, for 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 stopping during practice week, he just he didn't feel like he could physically physically it, do it. I, I had Jason on, and he when I were riding the bike, it were brilliant. He'd done a lot of work. He knew exactly where we were going, and I thought we were fine, but obviously we weren't. He was probably holding on too tight. And can you yeah. tell when a when a passenger is holding on too tight? No. Do they become a little bit slower? No, in what they're doing. No, they're just odd times you'll miss a corner or something. Right, and, and, you, that, and you can sorry, you can Chris, feel you can on, feel that yeah. instantly, can you? Yeah, you can yeah. feel. Yeah, you feel it through the bars if they're not just in the right place. So, and how does and how does that affect you as a driver? Do you then start? Then you start looking and you're showing off, and, off and yeah, jobs. Yeah, over then. So yeah. so yeah, obviously, um, Jason withdrew, but you you took on Dan. Yeah, because. It, it was uh, Jason's first time. We sort of spoke to Dan and said, "Look, if if Jason struggles, are you up for for jumping on?" Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Jason struggled, and and Dan jumped on. But but Dan had a big crash. Uh, I don't know sure what year it was. A few years ago, a milk is into it. Yeah. And uh, I went to see him in in entry hospital, and he was just like a, a dead cat led on the bed. Do you know what I mean? He was he was a mess. He was on mm -hmm. ventilator and everything. So he'd had a big crash and. I don't think he was fully fit from that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, but but he he jumped in the the the. the uh, <coughs> he jumped the on, and I thought, right, I've got Dan Sale on, eight times TT winner, went off like a scolded cat, and it was too quick for Dan just at the beginning. Do you know what I mean? So 
So we stopped to, to Balacrane. He said, John, I, I, can't, I can't do that sort of speed. Just, you know, give me time. So we brought it back. Next time we went out, I think we got to Balaf and he, he stopped again. It was just, I, I can't, I can't do it. So. That, on one hand, it must be so frustrating knowing that you're capable of doing it, knowing the bike's capable of doing yeah. it, but you just don't have that passenger to do what you need them to do. No. <clears throat> and that situation I'm in for 2023... I know I can I can go there. I, I know I'm getting old, but I still got the will and the, mm-hmm. the, the knowledge and, and the equipment to go go quick. And this in 2022, um, it we're down to the fourth quickest. But um, Pete and the Crawl lads only went four seconds quicker. Well, that's just on a good day, isn't it, darling? Yeah. So I'm still fine. And yeah, and last year I did some short circuits, and they were going quicker around the short circuits than I've done before. So I'm not slowing down, I'm, but I just need somebody to, to come with me and yeah. let's go and do this. This is what I love about the TT. You didn't pack up, you didn't leave, jump on the next ferry. No. You hung around and you ended up help, helping out with the TT. You were you were, you, you went off marshalling. Yeah, well, <clears throat> then marshals put a, put a lot into it mm-hmm. and I need to thank them all. And I thought, well, what, what, what are we going to do now? They were an opportunity to, to give a bit back. But um, I mentioned to you a funny story that uh, we came to the presentation in the in the in the fun part, whatever it was. Fan part. Fan part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, nothing fun about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> And you were on the stage waiting for somebody to turn up, weren't Phil, you? Yeah, Philip McCallum. So Philip McCallum <clears throat> was supposed to be the uh, the presenter of the the the. Um, the replicas, so, for, yeah, for people that don't know, it used to be down at the Villa Marina, I yeah, think, that's right. it? That yeah. was great at Villa. Oh, but, yeah. well, oh was it not, yeah. good, not good at the fun park? <laughs> yeah, it was, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, they moved it up to the fan park to, to allow the fans to see and more people, yeah. and the first person to present the prizes was, you know, Philip McCallan. So I, at no point did I think, let's just make sure Phil's here. Everyone went, yeah, we're yeah. ready to go on. I went up on stage. And I went, right, let's get this presentation underway. RST Superbike. Um, please welcome to the stage, Philip McCallum. And I'm stood there for a good few minutes. I'm like, where's Philip? And, <laughs> and they're like, no, we haven't got him yet. We haven't got him. So I had to stand up there for a good five minutes, filling with God knows You're what. going redder and redder. Yeah. <laughs> and I do, I'm looking around. I'm looking around. I'm like, can we get someone on? And John was there. Just sat there, just just a beer in hand, a waiting beer. for the, waiting for the well, presentation. Both side cars were on next, yeah, weren't they? Yeah. After, after, um... And I was like, Superbike, please come and help me, please. And you and you did. You. It was I, an it honor. It was amazing. It was honor, an honor. We went up there and give trophies out to Icky and. And it wasn't Dean. just because you were there. You, someone like yourself, your stature. No, no. I just. It was. I mean, you got a first time I went there. I was so suited to actually just be there racing. Yeah. And then I'm asked to give some trophies out. That was a, a great honor. And uh, giving save my skin. <laughs> yeah, but the hey, funny I love si- that. I love that. <laughs> the funny side of it was so that was uh, like I remember was it Sunday or something, and then on Monday yeah. I was marshalling like you said, and we were, I was at Silby Glen. Uh, no, I wasn't at Silby Bridge. Mm-hmm. I'm marshalling there, and uh, everybody gets a job, and I was I was a job to go out with the 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 blackboard the with and put a number on. So the black, so the black flag, the black the, flag, yeah. really, yeah. So <clears throat> I. Chief Sector Marshal says, we need to bring in number six. And I knew exactly who that was. <laughs> <laughs> so you had the honour of um, black flagging black Michael Black flagging Dunlop. Michael Dunlop. Yeah, so the day before I'm giving him his trophy, the next day... I'm, <laughs> You're saying I'm, get off this I'm track. pulling him in. Oh. How was the reception Michael gave you? I learned some Irish. <laughs> 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 but Michael and I are good friends. We, uh, I did the, uh, the Tri-Series in New Zealand... And uh, Michael was also there to, to get a few international riders there when, when they can. And, and Michael went over. So I spent quite a bit of time with Michael. So, yeah, it was it was. I bet, I bet the marshals loved that when you rocked up, though. I think it was good. It was good A PR show of as respect well. as well. Yeah. Like and and uh, the yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I, I would do it again. But uh, yeah, fair play. Was that your first time? That was Marshall. the first time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what it is. Them marshals, if... They're stood there and they just do not know what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. What what they're going to face, and fair play to them. They, 
Yeah, hats off to them all. Everyone Absolutely, them. yeah. Yeah, just yeah, and, like and yeah. finishing that story about Phil. So John does the trophies for the TT, uh, for the RST Superbike race. We do the trophies for the sidecars. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Philip McCallum comes onto stage. He's like, and he just stands there. <laughs> and I'm like, hi, Phil. He's like... <clears throat> I'm here for the... I'm like, mate, we've done it. We've handed them all out. <laughs> You're too late. <laughs> yeah. So he just stands there on the on the, on the stage. Like, Bless him. What, and what, then just skulks off. <laughs> what was good as well, for the sidecars, my father-in-law, Tony Baker, who's who's been round sidecars forever, and, and Fiona, my wife, they were presenting the, the yes. sidecar yeah, yeah, trophies yeah, yeah. out. Yeah. So I thought that was good. Just talking about Fiona, she, she raced... I mentioned before, and she was the fastest lady until she crashed. And uh, she crashed at Sky Hill. Sky Hill? Where yeah, is yeah, that? Yeah, come on. Where is I, it? I, I, I can't think where that is. Just before you go into into Ramsey, uh, you go past uh, Conquer Tree. Yep. And then it, it, goes, it goes right, and then there's a left before... Um, is it Milltown? Come to Milltown, Milltown. Come to Milltown yeah. Cottage. Milltown's the fast, <coughs> the fast uh, right yeah. into it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You well, go over over the crest. Over the crest, yeah. The, yeah. Well, Tony's handlebar broke off his off his sidecar, and oh, uh, wow. and he he crashed. He broke his tibia. He uh, really had a. She's got a bit of brain injury, but not not too bad, and really damaged her arm and and that. So and broke her neck. Mm. Just, I forgot to mention her neck. <laughs> yeah, she broke she broke her neck and she's a metal cage in her in her neck. Um so she was in a in a mess for quite oh, no. a while. Yeah, you were you were saying that. Um you were saying you boys go fast. Now, I was gonna pull you up on it, but I didn't want to, but it's not just the men that race the, the sidecars. Yeah. We do we do have a lot of women passenger in and, and, and driving as well. I went into the hospital to see her and I said to her, Oh, she'll be all right. She's only had a bang, but she'd broken her neck and head injuries <laughs> and all sorts. And, but CT uh, organisation were brilliant. They were, they were there because they, she crashed in the first first race, and uh, I'm not blowing smoke up my backside, but I was leading at the time, and we got black flagged. We well, got stopped at the bungalow, and I didn't know what was going on, and uh, sat there, and uh, one of Marshall's come and come to me and said, "John, it's Fiona and her dad." I, you know, they're right. Yeah, she's just a bit of. Uh, uh, Soft tissue injuries, you know what I mean? Should be all right. That's what they told you. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so they helicopter them both uh, to Nobles, and then we got a chance to drive back to to the pits, and I think there was about a two hour delay before we went again. So, so I went again and finished second. But um, the organizer were brilliant. As soon as I got off my bike, there was a car there to take me cool. to hospital and that. But yeah, That's, it was. So we we spoke about it in part one about. Um, about the responsibility that a, a driver has for a, a passenger. Yeah. But how does that affect you when the other half's out there racing? Uh, do you do you think I, about it or do you... Don't think about it. No, you, I think I think there's something wrong with me because I can <laughs> I just, <laughs> just get on with it. But again, is it, a, is it an unsaid <laughs> she, rule? She's I, think, I think that's sidecars in general. Yeah. <laughs> she's saying when I when I crashed in 2012, she was racing next, mm. you know... In the... So she was here now, she'd say exactly the same as soon yeah, as that visor's was. down. yeah. I can only yeah, we, I can only concentrate on this because it's yeah 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 and you can you can sort of put it in a box somewhere in, in yeah. your head and then just get on with it and it's it's like that when when somebody gets really injured or dies and that mm -hmm. you you have to or else you wouldn't do it would you so but yeah that, that that's it it would just stop you so yeah but there's no stopping you no I was I was talking to Lee Kane last night trying to cajole yeah. <laughs> Lee to to ride with me again. And he said, John, I just don't know whether I could be on Glen Country Road setting off and not think about my children. Mm -hmm. I said, well, there's only you, only you can sort that out in your head where yeah. you can or can't. He said, every time I've set off in the past, all I wanted to do was go fast and do a good job. He said, but whether my children are in my head or not, I don't know. So yeah. fair play to him. I mean, everybody's yeah. different, aren't they? And if you have to miss it, what, what happens then? Are you, do we just... You know, hypothetically, let's. Can, it's going to happen. You're going to be on there, but if it doesn't, I, well, I might not be. I might. I'm only going to go if I'm go with somebody who can do the yeah. job. I had a a, a great lad, um, Max Vassar. I went went to Shamir with him this year, and then I went to Knockhill. But for, 
he did a good job, but I just don't think I could line up there and look at Ben and Tom and think, right, I'm going to try and take it to you two guys. Yeah. And and there's there's quite a, a good set of lads, and you'd be you'd be tenth if you didn't watch out where you were, if you're just not trying. And I don't want to go there and be tenth. That's um, I love that. It, yeah, it, it's I great, it. isn't it? Especially yeah. yeah. I don't just want to go there and 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 just go round the island. I want to go there and compete and I could and take I could, it to the Birchill boys. I could go with anybody. <clears throat> couldn't I? Well, not anybody. You know, anybody who'd jump on with me and ride round. I, I don't want to do that now. So if you don't go to TT 2023 20, as a as a driver, are you still going to go out there? Are you still going to experience the TT? Or, are you, or is it going to be too hard to go and know that you you could be there? That could be difficult. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, I'm also doing the World Championship this year. Um, so we've got quite you know, a good season with that. We've got Spa, we've got Le Mans. Um, quite quite a nice place to go racing, do you know what I mean? Most and that, so... We've got... I have something, You're still going to get your buzz? <laughs> well, yeah, but... This, and I who's with you there? Who's passenger in there? Ashley Hawes, who, yeah. who yeah. Uh, won World Championship with Tim a few years ago. So Ashley's, Ashley's up for that, but he's not a TT rider. Yeah. So... But I always said I only race... Because of the TT, mm -hmm. so and so there I say the R word then. Well, I've I sort of said to myself, I'm not Peter Pan, and I don't want to not. You're doing, a good, you're doing a good job. Yeah, of being yeah. Peter Pan. Mm. It's Tinkerbell <laughs> that helps me. <laughs> What's Fiona's <laughs> opinion of all of, all of this? Fiona, yeah, she's frustrated. We went on holiday last week, and I was waiting for a, a phone call off Kevin Russo, and. He said he'd let me know before I went on holiday. It didn't do it. And I said, I'm right, I'm not going to take my phone with me because I'm, I'm on my phone all the time looking mm -hmm. to, you know, what, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I got the message, sorry, John, I, I can't do it. Well, that just wrecked my holiday. Wrecked Fiona's holiday. <laughs> it, yeah. I think I, it's sad. It's so important to me. It's, it's everything. Clearly, yeah. It's everything. And yeah. I don't know why. You think I've had enough by now. If you... If you eat potatoes every day, you probably get fed up with potatoes, don't you? So, but, but if you if you can only eat the best potatoes in the world, yeah, twice for two weeks, once that's a year, it. that's it. Yeah, it's on. You're gonna get twice. Yeah, chance to go down that hill properly. And I think because of my age, I, I did say that this will be my last year mm -hmm. because I don't I don't want to finish up the front somewhere. Um, yeah, you know what I mean and. Beauty of it is, my son, he's uh, he's racing now, and doing doing quite well. And he wants to go to the Alaman eventually, but yeah. um, not just yet. He has things to do at BSB. Yet, so. mm -hmm. Does he listen to you? Does he take your advice? Well, you know what kids are like. They, they, <laughs> kids. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, he does, but he'll uh, always come up with a good answer not to. But he's he's brilliant on uh, on my stats if. I know I asked John Newton, but if I'd have asked George, he'd have come up with just off the top of his head, yeah, you've done this time or whatever, do you know what I mean? Knows so his stuff. He, he knows his stuff yeah. and he's learnt a lot from me and he's uh, he's quite he's quite good at what he does. So. Well, it'd be sad not to see you on the on the start line uh, at this year's TT. I, I don't I think know a lot of people will, with it. will say that, yeah. Lee Johnston, it's down to you. That's it, yeah. I don't want that. I don't want that to happen, but if it does, then so be it. Steve. I love that passion. Love it. Let's get some quick fire questions from you. Yeah, quick fire questions. Go just on. just ten questions. Answer one or the other, please. No excuses. Well, yes or no, are they? No. Oh. <laughs> Beer or lager? Lager. Well, Guinness, actually. Bacon butty or eggs benedict? Eggs benedict, because I don't eat bread. You posh kid. Two stroke or four stroke? I think two stroke, but four strokes are easier, aren't they? Glen Helen to Balaf or Bungalow to Cronk Namona? Glen Helen to Balaf. Blonde or black hair? Black. I've got to say black. I know that. I looked last night. <laughs> <laughs> but she was blonde when I first met her. She, she's real short blonde there. Now she's got long black hair. So, yeah. <laughs> um, short circuit or road racing? Road racing. Dan Sale or Andrew Winkle? Andy Wink. Mass start or time trial? Mm, I like mass start. 
British champion or TT winner? TT, every day. Ben Burchill or Dave Molyneux? Dave. As in, in what? Mate, it's just a question. You answer it in your own context. <sighs> oh, I don't know. They're both enemies, aren't Too they? Too late, you've answered. <laughs> <laughs> Where's, what, about, what about pineapple? Where's your pineapple? Oh, well, that was my bacon butty question. Oh, was it? I want pineapple. That's what the fans come to for. That's pineapple what they're for. Pineapple or never pineapple on a pizza? Or pineapple. Get in there. Yeah, See? gotta be pineapple. Cereal. Ham and pineapple. Yeah. Amazing. Or pepperoni. Oof. But not pepperoni and pineapple. pineapple. No, 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 no. John, we could sit here and chat all day. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get you on again at some point, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see you on that start line in TT 2023. Hey, good luck, mate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. I said it at the top of the show, and I'll say it again. 65. 65. Most 65-year-olds are going to pick up the pension. And he's... You say it, Steve. It must be that diet. I don't, I'm not sure. But, That's mate, it. he still looks fit as a fiddle. It really does. And you've said it. Oh, like, the hunger is still there. The passion. The yeah. hunger. I, obviously, you know, the man loves the event anyway. Mm-hmm. But he's still passionate and only interested in competing if he can win. Ag- I love that. I love that. If again. Tom was my passenger yeah 100% I'll be winning but there's no way you're going to break up a, a family a family bond like that not at, a chance of, of the Birchalls so it's it is pretty sad to think that someone who's still capable of producing results and like he says he still feels like he can take it to the Birchalls but it might not even be down to him as to whether he, he gets to compete or not that must be a bitter pill to swallow knowing you're still competitive knowing you still can do it no, of course. You know, on the technical side, you know, you know, machinery, he's got everything he possibly needs to be competitive. But, mate, listen, I think he'll be there. When you've got that much passion, you'll do it by hook or by crook. Fingers crossed he will be, because, mm. yeah, as, as as much as we'd love to see him commentating on the sidecars or whatever, I'd sooner see him down there. Prefer him competing, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, fingers crossed, let's hope we, uh, we, we see John down there. This has been the second part of the John Holden episode of the TT Podcast. If you've enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button and leave us a review wherever you listen to these podcasts. Steve loves reading them. (laughs) They say so many nice things about him and nobody says anything nice about him. No, to be fair, they do. They do. (laughs) They do. We we obviously, we read them all. And don't forget, you can get all the latest TT news and features over at iomttracers.com. Dot com. And don't forget, we've got loads more star-studded guests coming on the TT podcast, including this one next week. Um, Steve, Rob, I mean, I mean, Rob McElney, Rob McElney, or just straight up Rob Mack? Rob Mack's easier. Do you know what? I'm not honestly sure the correct pronunciation. I've ridden for that man. I've been in his team. I spent time with him, been on holiday with him, shared a bed with him. I'm not even sure what his flipping you name is. You didn't even ask him. We'll go more into that later. But that Honda... I had such an amazing technique of starting it. It was a 404, and I'd just leave the clutch out, or to put it in first gear, leave the clutch out, and just rock it like that, and you go. And they go, he's got, he's got a bloody starter motor on it. <laughs> and honestly, I was gone. No one could beat me from the line. I could just have to rock the... Just, I didn't have to paddle it, like everybody was yeah. jumping. Everybody was on the side of the bikes running or paddling. I'd just literally leave the clutch out and rock it like that, <laughs> and it would fire up, and I'd be gone. And there'd be people moaning and complaining anyway. I didn't have a starter motor, but it was a complete standard bike. They all caught me up eventually. But, Did you have um, to make sure it was right on the j- point j- of just, compression? Just, yeah, just like that, yeah. exactly. And leave your clutch there. It'd t- 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 <laughs> take half a step and it would fire. And just practised it in my garage at home for hours. <laughs> But um, I could just fire It did help away. having a big lad from Sky that, yeah. pushing it as well. I had a few kilos <laughs> pushing it. That episode is out next week, and don't forget you can get all the latest news and features over at iomttracers.com. And be sure to check us out on all the usual socials. We are at TT Racers Official. Official work done. Time to go home. Brew time. Leave us a review.